Okay, so I'm not sure what you've heard about it. Um, I'm not sure it's even true, to be honest, because recently I found out uh, apparently Florian Moller is doing one of his uh, tricks again and trying to distort truth and trying to push it really hard by spamming journalists and sending them. Uh, let you actually go back a bit and explain. The, the person called Florian Moller, for those who don't know, he's been a lobbyist for the past like six, seven years. Uh, before that, he used to like, write books and do all kinds of stuff. Maybe wrote some code as well, but he hasn't done it for a while. He, he was going to work as a lobbyist for a football, well, a football club, basically for a company, and his goal was to try and change the laws and uh, influence politicians and things like that. So he knows how to play the game of influencing people. And one of the things I found, I produced evidence for, is that he is mass mailing journalists and really, really tries to get them to quote him, to kind of give him some reputation or something, you know, really wants to put his name in lots of articles and, and people linking to his blogs and giving some credibility. Now, what you usually found, well, based on history, you could find, you, you probably found that uh, he's got a very bad record when it comes when it comes to getting the, the, the facts straight. So, because he's a lobbyist, he's not supposed to, in my, in, in my view, he does, he's not supposed to say the truth. He's supposed to be told the story of the truth that he's supposed to uh, to push. So he's been given a, uh, a task, perhaps, of trying to demonize Google, or trying to find something to be infringing, and to scare away makers of, you know, from supporting Android. Now he doesn't have much influence on his own because he does. He's not a publisher and he's just writing some little blog. So what he would do, he would start spamming journalists and try to shout his, uh, to sneak in all of these distortion of the truths. Uh, so one of the things he did recently, he, uh, I think it was partly him, and maybe some more people who collaborate with him, and I think he's been briefed by much the PR department based on things he told me. Uh, so he was squeezing the, uh, the claim that the Galaxy tablets from Samsung were being banned in the EU, or were going to be banned in the EU based on some German decision. Uh, and I'm saying is, I'm starting by actually introducing the source of this thing because I don't think that's exactly true anymore. As we may have found a few days ago, uh, we may have found out he was changing quite a few, bending the truth around uh, which court was saying what exactly what the consequences were because journalists themselves are usually not lawyers and they don't train no German laws, especially when they write in the English speaking press. So they were, the story which was being pushed was basically the Linux based or the Android based devices from Samsung were being blocked and Apple was, was seeking to do the same, the same type of thing, the same embargo with an injunction against Motorola just before Google bought Motorola. So, so that was the, that was the really major piece of news, you know, Apple being very aggressive and Android being very dangerous, and you know, if you're a company publishing this on Android because you will be embargoed from the market, all kinds of stuff. So that was a fairly scary bit of news. Now, the decision, of course, has been overruled and reversed. Uh, the, the Galaxy products are still going to be sold EU wide without any issues. Uh, so, of course, the whole rumor and the whole allegations that were made, that's, that's all turns out to be a pile of rubbish, basically. And the other thing we found out, though, is that when Apple was in fact trying to get its way by basically removing the competition from the market so that the only tablet you could get was an iPad, uh, what they did is they faked the evidence, they took the uh, products in question and they kind of photoshopped them a bit or gimped them a bit. I don't think they used the gimp, but that's actually a separate <laughs> subject we'll cover later. But uh, what they what they did is they were producing some fake evidence to the court in an attempt to try and show that the competition was you know copying their tablet. Uh, so that ended uh, you know where we stand now. It seems like Apple was just really embarrassing itself because they cannot quite compete against Android. I think Android's market share in tablets is now like 40 percent and rising, uh, and, and Apple doesn't really know what to do about it. Well, I think we've got a, a little mention of uh, GIMP 2.7.3, yeah. which Roy's going to elaborate on. Well, there isn't too much to say. This is just something I found out today, and I just thought because we, because it's, it's better to have news from today than from two weeks ago, because some of the things we covered today 
are just things we haven't had a chance to speak about in the show, and I think they were, at least from my point of view, pretty important things. So today, the game, uh, the new version, you know, new branch of 2.7, it's, it's not really a major release, it's actually a pretty minor one. Um, but I, I, I don't, have you, have you had a chance to use it before? The GIMP, uh, very briefly, and uh, I can't remember if I've mentioned this on the show before, but I, I really don't have a need for any advanced graphical effects or features um, that a program like GIMP would offer. My digital photography is limited to a little bit of uh, gamma uh, brightness contrast correction, and that's literally all I would ever consider doing, and there's uh, a plethora of little apps that can do that without the uh, overly complex, uh, in my opinion, a GUI of uh, of the GIMP, uh, not detracting from the fact that it's an excellent package, and I would love to have the time to be able to learn it because I think there's a lot I'm missing out on. However, with not having a, an immediate need for the extra facilities that it offers, I haven't really given it a good shout uh, over the last few years anyway. It, it would be very interesting to know how many of the images in the web, how many of the images on people's uh, books and papers and homework and who knows what, actually produced by the game, because I think it's very um, grossly uh, undercovered in some ways. Uh, the fact that, do you, do you know how many things are based in the game? You know, you have know, loads of packages which were built upon parts of the game, so game is like the stock type of code that you can use, I think it's written in C and C++, but in some parts in Python, depending if you use the plugins. Uh, and, and this is like the resource, if you want to have all those basic things like filters and, you know, blurring and uh, effects and mosaicing and all kinds of stuff. The, the GIMP has got, has got just about everything in, in the form of a plugin or in the form of a built-in functionality. And now it will have the option of just being a uh, single window interface for those who, you know, really insist that you couldn't possibly work with a different window for each of the images you work with. I, I find it to be more convenient, to be honest, especially after getting used to that over the years. And if you work with 10 images, you probably do want them in separate windows. And if you have loads of space in desktop, it's, it's pretty helpful. Um, and one of the things they did in this release was just bug fixes. 2.8 is supposed to come up in, uh, I think, in December. So 2.8 is the uh, first major release in a very, very long time. I think over a year, maybe three years. Uh, so the project is really slowing down. There were some concerns about, you know, other developers still finding time to, to write the program. And, and this is very essential. This is like the Swiss, uh, the Swiss Army knife operation in Solar Linux distribution. This is the graphics manipulation program for most purposes. Unless you want just a photo kind of editing, you know, flip, rotate, you know, uh, remove you know, red eye correction, things like that. So, and, and I've, I've produced, I think, something close to like 10,000 images in the game since like 2000, I don't know, let's say the past 10 years about. I, I produced at least 1,000 a, a year and put it in all kinds of documents that I do and, uh, and uh, pass it around to people. Uh, my website, even the editing of pictures that I upload to my site. It's, it's a really, really powerful package. And it takes you all to burn it, I suppose, especially people don't really know how to use the shift and control and things like that and how to connect the lines so they like pick one you know, a pencil and they say, How do I do a line? Where's the line functionality? And this is this is the point where they have to know the basics of the applications, like the certain keyboard shortcuts and things. And once once they get a basics it's it's very easy and it's really fun to work with. Oh I would like to know, Roy, because it's something I haven't looked into. I know that um just picking a, a language out there air now, Python. Um, there's a, a a book released uh, free, uh, completely free uh, to download and use called the Byte of Python that explains the steps for using Python, getting to to know the language. Is there anything similar for the GIMP? Uh, maybe like a how-to or an idiot's guide uh, to the GIMP, or is you have it just some online books? You have the uh, well, you have reference guides. You have a uh, you have loads of e-books. You probably could go to the shop and find one of the officials one way. Yeah, I don't I think I've come across any, to be honest. I, I think have a I'm sure I've seen um, an A-Press book 
about the GIMP um, on GIMP. I'm sure I have. But I was asking more along the lines of sort of like a bite of Python. You know, somebody's taken the time to to write a, a, a comprehensive tutorial that's released uh, for everybody's consumption free of charge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have always been a proponent of not using books to do things that you have to practice. Mm. Uh, way back in the days when I was like 10 years old, you know, like my mom would use all these books about like you know, loads 